Right, so here is a generic two-stage CMOS amplifier with an NMOS uh, differential input pair. And we're going to be doing this pole splitting compensation uh, by adding a Miller compensation capacitor. Right to the right uh, to the second stage or across the second stage uh, gain. Now we assume that there's also some load capacitance that the uh, op amp might be driving, uh, so I'm going to add a capacitor C sub L. Now, if we look at our generic model for a voltage amplifier, this is really the circuit model that we've been looking at all along as we've been uh, finding voltage gain for uh, voltage gains and poles for. Uh, single stage amplifiers. Uh, we assume that we have some transconductance uh, that's driving a resistor. Uh, the transconductance is the big GM, uh, and it, uh, it is typically comprised of a transistor circuit plus uh, some additional uh, external components. Uh, we have uh, some total resistance that it's driving and some total capacitance that it's driving. Now we're going to add a compensation capacitor uh, to our circuit. Uh, so we have two stages. Our first stage, GM1 uh, and R1. Our second stage, GM2 and R2. And now we're adding our compensation capacitor. Now I'm going to label the output node of the circuit node A. And we'll note that big GM1 is just equal to little GM1 or 2, uh, as we found before. Uh, RI is equal to RO2 in parallel with RO4. And CI is equal to all of the capacitors are at, that are at node A. We can similarly find the parameters for the second stage. Here I've labeled the output node, node O. Our big GM2 is equal to GM6. Our R2 is equal to RO6 in parallel with R7, RO7. And our C2 is all of the capacitors at node O, including the load capacitance. Now we're going to solve this by doing KCL at node A and node O. And I'm going to write those equations. So here's the first KCL equation at node A. Here's the second KCL equation at node O. Now we're going to solve for VO over VI as a function of frequency. And when we finish solving for V out over VI, we should have an expression like this. Uh, we see a first order expression in the numerator, so we have a zero, and we see a second order expression in the denominator, so we have two poles. All right, so here I've just rewritten that expression. We can see it all uh, a bit more clearly now. We can, again, see that there are two poles. Both of these poles are in the left half plane. We can see that there is one zero, and that one zero is in the right half plane. The poles, if you do uh, analysis to uh, factor the denominator, we can find are given by one over GM2 R1 R2 times CC. This is our dominant pole, omega P1. Our second pole is equal to GM2 CC divided by C1 C2 plus CC times C1 plus C2. Now, we're going to note that C2 is approximately equal to C sub L. In other words, it's dominated by the load capacitance. And we're also going to note that C1 times C2 should be a very small number because this is a product of two capacitors uh, that have uh, very small values. So we can generally neglect uh, this term. Uh, and then we can factor out the CC term. And our omega P2 is approximately equal to GM2 divided by CL. And our zero is given by GM2 over S times CC. Now we can see that this zero comes from that Miller capacitance, and that's the feed forward path across an amplifier stage always creates a right half plane zero, so we can see that very clearly here. Now, this zero is going to end up causing us quite a bit of problems, and we're going to look at that in a Bode analysis in the next video. So we'll stop here for this video and start that in the next video.